Matt, there's so much to talk about here on Horse Center. Justify, undefeated, the 13th Triple Crown winner in history. Where does he stack up against other Triple Crown winners of the past? And, of course, we need to talk a little bit about the controversy coming out of the Belmont Stakes. What else? There were so many great performances on the Belmont Stakes undercard, like Monomoy Girl and the exciting finish in the Met Mile. And we'll preview the Stephen Foster on Saturday night at Churchill. Watch Horse Center now. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the fantastic pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. We had quite a weekend in New York out here on the East Coast, did we not, my friend? We did, Matt. Uh, good times, good times, historical times. We saw the 13th, only the 13th Triple Crown winner in American history. In fact, me, you, and uh, Jason and Nick uh, made our way out into the crowd. We were part of the raucous celebration. That was a good thing to do. I was justified, rolled down the stretch to win the Belmont Stakes. It sure was, and, and it was quite a crowd, and raucous is a good word uh, to describe it with the 90,000 people at Belmont Park. Hey, we're fans too, Matt. Uh, I, I, you know, It's one thing to be in the press box or somewhere a little bit more sterile, but uh, I'm glad that we were out there, part of it, and feeling all the energy in the crowd and the excitement. It was uh, something we'll never forget. That's for sure. It, it, you know, you get that great feeling that that racing uh, is alive and well. Right. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the race here, Matt. Or let, let's talk specifically about Justify. February 18 was his first race. The maiden sprint at Santa Anita. Less than four months later, he's running a mile and a half at Belmont. You know, I have no regrets. Last week on Horse Center, both of us said we we're going to try to beat Justify. And and frankly, you know, people will 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 argue with me, of course. But frankly, I, I feel like Justify at those odds on odds were was a good was a good batting opportunity to take a shot against him. So uh, Matt and I both tried to beat Justify in the Belmont strictly as betters, but we were both pleased to see him win. Matt, he took the race from gate to wire. He sure did, Brian. And you know, um, the race was pretty much over very quickly when uh, uh, Mike Smith got him out of the gate smartly and, and he was able to open up to uh, and get a comfortable margin very, very quickly. And when those fractions uh, popped up on the tote board, Brian, um, they were very moderate. And when I saw 113 in change for six furlongs, at that point, Brian, I, I didn't really think there was any chance that anybody was going to go by uh, the big red horse. Yeah, those fractions, Matt, uh, you know, certainly Justify uh, uh, had a good trip. It was uh, somewhat American Pharaoh like The first quarter was for a Belmont Stakes for a mile and a half race was pretty fast. But, but after that, he, uh, he kind of uh, slowed down a little bit on the lead, had a working margin the entire way. This horse is good enough, and he seems to have an extra gear whenever he needs it. So we, we don't know if if more pressure would have uh, uh, made this uh, a much more difficult task or not. He might have still won. But uh, it, it was the race, certainly, that Mike Smith and Bob Baffert were hoping uh, would unfold, and it did. Gronkowski was last early, made a nice move uh, up the rail. I guess Vino Rosso, when the real running began, Vino Rosso was the first one to to, to, to make a move, uh, that certainly wasn't good enough. Gronkowski made a move up the rail, but never looked like he was getting there. Hofberg made a move on the turn, uh, but didn't have the real strong stretch kick. So Justify, uh, you know, it, 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 was, it was cruise control pretty much. It, it reminded me of the Derby a little bit. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting with this horse, uh, six, six races, the, the last three being the triple crown, we really don't know how good he is yet. I, I think there could be more there. Uh, but on the other hand, he, he probably wasn't as impressive just in the triple crown as, say, American Pharaoh three years ago. Yeah, and, and that's what's so unique about what Justify has done, that it, that, it, that it has all come in such a short amount of time. Um, and his performance in the Belmont Stakes, I, I feel like he's, he is 
at his best on a on a fast track, even though um, he won the Derby and the Preakness on the slop. That's a feather in his cap for his versatility. He seems to be able to run uh, on different types of surfaces, different race tracks. Um, so yeah, I I liked it when you used the the description of cruise control because that's really what it looked like he he just goes easily and three horses made runs at him and and i don't even know if i could say they made runs at him they started to close um on the rest of the field but they never really got close enough to justify to threaten him it didn't seem like he needed to 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 dig down anymore. He just continued to do what he was doing, um, which uh, he seems to make it look very easy. Right. Uh, final time. It was a fast track out there. Final time of, of uh, just over 228. Um, nothing special, but certainly nothing slow. It's faster than a lot of recent Belmonts. A little bit slower. American Pharaoh ran over a second faster three years ago. Keep Keep comparing it to American Pharaoh. Of course, he's the only Triple Crown winner in the last 40 editions and uh, trained by Bob Baffert. There are a lot of similarities there. We got to give a lot of credit to trainer Bob Baffert. Not everybody uh, uh, is a fan of Bob Baffert. But, uh, I think everybody has to uh, uh, stand up and take notice that uh, what he's done, especially in Triple Crown races, uh, whether it was in the mid to late 90s or since, or especially in the last four years, it's historic. He became only the second trainer to have two Triple Crown winners. He became the all-time leader in triple cr the Triple Crown series. And then you got Mike Smith, who, you know, uh, 25, 30 years ago was, was, a, was a strong jockey. But it seems like he's only getting better with age. The horse flesh he gets, the tactical uh, decisions he, he makes in a race, it, it, it's like Mike Smith, if, if you have a, a big race, Mike Smith is the first jockey we should look at. Yeah, and it makes us uh, older guys uh, feel a little bit younger, maybe seeing a 52-year-old 52 um, uh, achieving the, the greatest victory in racing with the Triple Crown. That's right. Uh, he he's even older than I am, and Bob Baffert. Uh, Bob Baffert had a, a serious heart attack over in Dubai a few years ago, and now he's bounced back to win two Triple Crowns. Uh, a lot of respect for Baffert and Smith. They they two different jobs, but they both know what they're doing, and they both certainly know what they're doing in these big races. Now, Matt. Uh, Justify becomes the 13th uh, Triple Crown winner. I think we start uh, talking about where he fits in in history. He's the lightly, the most lightly raced of this group. But uh, uh, interesting, in, in especially thinking about what he's accomplished so quickly in his career, uh, where do you think he might fit in with the all-time greats or the 13 immortal Triple Crown winners? Well, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um when you talk about the triple crown winners, of course, you know, secretariat is at the top and, and, and way above all the others with the, with the times that he ran in all three races and the two twenty four in the, uh, in the Belmont stakes, even though it was against the small field, that, that kind of, uh, record is, is just, uh, it is so amazing that, I don't know if anybody will ever get on that level. And then, and then in the modern era, the, 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 each of those series were so different with affirmed and Alidar. They had that unique feature of that, of that rivalry and that head to head battle in all three of the races. And that makes that special. And for so many people, American Pharaoh being the one to end the 37 year drought for me, it's very hard to rank them in there, but certainly Maybe Justify has a lot of similarities with uh, Seattle Slough, both of them being undefeated uh, Triple Crown winners. Right, and and Seattle Slough, I think I, I think I rate Seattle Slough a little bit higher than you do. I, I you know I, I I remember I was there when uh, Seattle Slough dominated, affirmed uh, as a four year old, affirmed was still a three year old, but those those two races weren't really close. 
So Seattle SLU, uh, I, I agree with you, most in common with Justify to this point, two undefeated Triple Crown winners, two speed horses, two horses who kind of did what they needed to do in the Triple Crown, didn't win by five, eight, ten lengths in any of the races, but uh, and maybe SLU won, won uh, his margins were a little bit bigger than Justify, but they weren't, uh, weren't over. Uh, I'm with you, Secretariat, uh, has to be number one. Citation, of course, though. Citation, we need to mention him um, of the horses before the first year out. Citation, certainly with with those long winning streaks he had and and the way he won the Triple Crown. Different kind of racing back then, but Citation certainly is an all-time great. Other other ones uh, back then, War Admiral uh, certainly uh, won a ton. Whirl away with his exciting come-from-behind style. Count Fleet was one of the most dominant Triple Crown winners of all time. More recently, yeah, American Pharaoh. Uh, I, American Pharaoh won his Triple Crown races easier than Justify. They each had one more tough uh, race. Uh, American Pharaoh in the Derby and Justify in the Preakness. But American Pharaoh did run a little faster than Justify. Uh, but uh, considering what he's done and, and the fact that he's undefeated and 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 uh, uh, gone from so. Uh, uh, such a short amount of time, unraced to triple crown winner. You know, it, it's easy for me to to rate justify right there with American Pharaoh. And to this point, with Seattle Slew, affirmed it was different, much more racing at this point, and he had a great rival. We can't rate justify in the uh, secretariat realm, though, for sure. I'm also interested to see, you know, what happens later in his career. Uh, you know, a lot of these horses we're talking about. Uh, other than secretary, went on to race quite a bit after the Triple Crown. Even American Pharaoh took it through the Breeders' Cup Classic and a winning Breeders' Cup Classic performance. So I think Justify's ultimate place in history will will depend a little bit whether he gets two or three more races uh, to see where he fits in on an all-time level. Yeah, I, I agree with that, Brian. Uh, you know, and, and with rating some of the Triple Crown, um, uh, performances. It has to do with what was going on there I, in 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 the series at those points, because for so many people, American Pharaoh has a really special place um, in their hearts and in history because he broke the 37 year streak. It was a little bit of a different feeling. It, it was so it was exciting at Belmont Park uh, when he was coming down the stretch, but it was a little bit of a different feeling. Um, just. Uh, you know, just three years later from American Pharaoh's victory when Justify uh, won the Belmont. Yeah, right on, Matt, because American Pharaoh, I, w I was in the stands as a kid for Secretariat, and I was there for American Pharaoh. I think there was more of, a, of an emotional yeah. emotional uh, uh, release, if you will, where it had been so long since we saw a Triple Crown winner, and that only added to everything. And now, much like Secretar after Secretariat, we some triple crown winners and now three years after american pharaoh we uh we saw a triple crown winner it was it was more of a pure celebration for an undefeated triple crown winner and that's another thing about justify when we're talking about his place in history the apollo uh, apollo's curse uh he's the first horse to, to do it in almost a century and a half uh, he's only the second triple crown winner to go through the series undefeated that uh more more points on justifies behalf for those two accomplishments yeah and i think like you said it'll be really important to see how many more times justify runs and if he can keep his uh winning streak going for the rest of his career absolutely and and hopefully we will see justify again the connections are saying the right things now uh i do uh the skeptic skeptical part of me you know knows that that's that's pr and that's uh they're saying what they're supposed to be saying at this point but uh I think there's reason for the, for them to want to stick around and be in the Breeders' Cup Classic like American Pharaoh did at the very least. Yeah, I agree with that. But again, um, we'll see what happens. I, I wouldn't be uh, tremendously surprised if he doesn't run again. And probably somewhere in between, I see him having two more races um, in his career. Um, a prep race in September. Um for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Right, and you've been saying that for, for a few weeks now, Matt, and, and that makes a lot of sense to me. The optimist in me wants to see two or three more races 
I don't I, I don't see him racing next year. The pessimist in me uh, worries that uh, a- anything, any misstep along the way, any minor minor physical setback would uh, would usher in the retirement of Justified. But we uh, we certainly hope to have him right back here in Louisville, November for the Breeders' Cup Classic and a chance at uh, what do they call it, Matt the Grand Slam. The Grand Slam, the second uh, Grand Slam winner, as American Pharaoh did it uh, in 2015. Matt's celebration of the 13th Triple Crown winner, undefeated Triple Crown Justify, but there's controversy. What would this world be without a little controversy? Uh, things have exploded a little bit. Uh, Tom Padua uh, d- did a nice story on New York Post, a fair story. Uh, but uh, that, that story on the New York Post has exploded a little bit uh, with uh, comments from owners like uh, Gary West and especially Mike Rapoli. We're talking about restoring hope written by Florent Giroux, owned by the Wests. Uh, entered in the race as a likely horse who would be on or near the lead. But uh, there's reason to think that uh, uh, his run, especially in the first few furlongs of the Belmont Stakes, was not completely above board kosher and uh, maybe a little bit overt in his actions to act as some sort of interference for the other Baffert, the winner, Justify. Yeah, there's certainly been uh, a lot of hoo-ha about uh, about that topic and, and Twitter and social media certainly do their share in, uh, in fanning the flames of that fire. But in my opinion, Brian, I, I don't see it. I think for Mike Rapoli, the owner of, uh, of Vino Rosso, I, I think it was a little bit of a Steve Coburn uh, type reaction, and I'm referring to back when California Crown lost and Steve Coburn lost his mind on national TV. It, the, Rapoli's comments were not on national TV, but I, but I think it was a little bit of an emotional overreaction to what was going on. I've watched the replay a bunch of times, and you know, I guess I can see where it's coming from, but. If anything happened, it it clearly had no effect on on the way the race played out, and and clearly uh, um, did nothing to to aid justify. Matt, I am going to have to disagree with you a little bit there. Uh, I like you have seen uh, replays, angles. In fact, uh, our uh, our guy Mark uh, Midland uh, has a new story on Horse Racing Nation uh, examining the. Uh, the issue, and I think that's a that's a really good read. If you get a chance to get to Horse Racing Nation for that article on uh, transparency, at least, um, yeah, there, there's there's a lot of things here. First off, uh, what Restoring Hope did in the run into the first turn and then early into the turn, uh, it, it it looks it looks bad to me. Um, there was a little bit of bumping. Bravazo bumped Restoring Hope. Uh, Jeru. Uh, among his the few comments that he made was that uh, his horse was a little rank early, but but the way he was rushed up and how wide he went in the first turn, which did directly affect Noble Up Indy's ability uh, to make more of a lead uh, a run for the lead, uh, it, it it looked fishy, and then and then the way Giroux quickly. Um, not really went after Justify, but he went after the inside again. After going floating eight wide on the turn, he he made a pretty sharp move to get back inside. It, it, it almost looked unnatural to me for him to want to yank his horse so quickly inside, which did block Bravazo a little bit, another uh, potential horse who would go after Justify early. So given that and given the fact that you know Windstar Farm that there was was some questions about what exactly they're trying to do a few years ago or or not even questions it was pretty overt that uh, when they had creator win the Belmont mm-hmm. uh, Gettysburg was a speed horse Gettysburg was with Pletcher all of a sudden he was with Asmussen and Gettysburg helps at the table because creator basically won the Belmont in the last stride or two over Destin and Destin was affected to some extent by Gettysburg. So Windstar has a little history in trying to 
be the puppet master here and pull the strings a little bit. So, yeah, and you know, I I, I agree with you much more about the creator Destin uh, Belmont Stakes because there was the taking of the way, taking the horse away, and giving it to another trainer, and and to me that was a situation where where everything was right out on the table, uh, the motives and what was going to happen. Um, what went on in the Belmont stakes with Jeru's ride and, and, and such uh, is all very, uh, you know, is all kind of hazy and unfocused and, and hard to know, you know, uh, everybody's telling a story and, and I mean, just what is what happened out there match what Jeru said, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess it. I, I guess it kind of does, but you know, um, in the end, like I said before, I, I don't think anything that happened had any effect on the result of the race. Justify was just flat out too good, as opposed to with uh, Creator and uh, Destin and Gettysburg, where it it probably did determine the outcome of that race. Fair enough, and I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm not going to sit here and say that Justify wouldn't have won the race anyway. Uh, but if there was some something said before the race, Baffert, Windstar, Giroux, that does bother me a little bit that, uh, uh, that, that they're planning to run the interference, for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think betters and racing fans deserve more and uh, maybe not the fairest play in the world if that's in fact what happened. But I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this. The stewards aren't really pursuing uh, the issue too much, going after Giroux and finding out about that. Uh, it was odd that Javi Castellano seemed to um, not listen to Rapoli or what Rapoli assumed Pletcher's uh, Pletcher's instructions to Javi Castellano were, and, and, it, and it went so far, Matt, that Rapoli's quoted as saying, I will not ride Castellano anytime soon. So uh, obviously there was some bad feelings there where one of the top jockeys and a jockey who rides a lot of Pletcher and Rapoli horses. Uh, but on the other hand, he was on a horse that was partially owned by Windstar Farm. So there's, so there's that conspiracy theory as well. Um, what was Castellano doing not trying to go after the lead and did, in fact, uh, restoring hope hinder Castellano's any chance to, to go after Justify a little bit more early? Yeah. And, you know, and again, I, I, I am going to credit it, uh, Rapoli's comments with a little bit of disappointment with the result of the race and, and, and a lot of feeling and emotion going on in a race, the Belmont stakes, that's very important to him. Um, it's also been re reported and observed that noble Indy, um, acted up a great deal in the paddock and in the post parade seemed to be a little bit st stirred up, um, by the crowd and everything that was going on. So, you know, um, by the time they got to the starting gate, um, uh, maybe noble Indy did not want to have, didn't want to be too much a part of the racing by, by that point. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, Hey, bottom line, I'm just going to say it again, is that uh, none of this affected uh, the uh, the outcome of the race. Um, you know, my, my only other thing is that uh, uh, racing has gone completely away from uh, coupled entries when there's joint ownership to uh, have more betting interests in, in races, to increase the handle, and I don't know. Maybe that's not uh, where we need to be any longer. Yeah, this this was a strange setup, uh, an incestuous setup, if you will, yep. Matt, with with the uh, many many owners of Justify and, and and the joint ownership, partial joint ownership here and there. So it it was almost asking for a little bit of conspiracy conspiracy yep. theory. Hey, everybody loves conspiracy theory. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think for racing it doesn't look good. You know, we're, 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 we, we know a lot about racing. We've been around racing a long time. 
uh, most everybody that's watching our show right now knows a lot about racing, but uh, there's a lot of people that don't hear about racing other than the Kentucky Derby and the Triple Crown. And now where you have this story coming out about maybe a little dirty dealing, maybe a little bit of uh, 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 helping the Triple Crown winner become a Triple Crown winner, it just doesn't look good for racing. No, and, and, and all of this is probably happening now because of the, uh, the sparks that, that, that uh, initiated this fire a couple weeks before the race with the uh, audible um, being removed from consideration. Another win start, and, and, and in my mind, that whole thing going on there is probably what, uh, you know, got this kind of uh, discussion going uh, so heatedly after the the triple crown. That's right. Windstar Farm has a lot of money in in all of this, and uh, creator Gettysburg a few years ago, Audible suddenly uh, uh, not training as well as is the story that came in, but not running as one of the horses that Justify would really have to worry about in the Belmont. There, there's reason why we're talking about it today, but. Uh, Again, Matt, uh, I'm with you. The best horse won, and he was going to win probably uh, no matter what uh, what the tactics of Noble Indy or Bravazo were and uh, without any sort of interference by restoring hope. But uh, an interesting story. All right, Matt, uh, Belmont Stakes Day Justify was the star of the show, was the national news, but of course... We need to talk about some of the other horses that ran on Belmont Stakes Day. And, uh, and I think of the rest, Monomoy Girl was the star of the show. Matt, she's seven of eight lifetime. She lost a photo at two, four big stakes wins this year, the last three grade ones. Now she dropped back to one turn for the acorn. Yeah, Brian, Monomoy Girl. I, I tell you what, in, in the latest poll and, and when I had to vote for the top three-year-old, I put Monomoy Girl as the second best three-year-old, male or female, in, in the country, she is really something special. Like you said, she's only lost once by a neck, and that was a race where she broke poorly out of the gate and 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 had a little bit of an erratic stretch run. She could easily be unbeaten in uh, um, in, in eight starts. She is a special horse, scheduled next for the Coaching Club American Oaks on July 22nd at Saratoga. Yes, hopefully we get those three races three more races they've planned out for her this year coaching club american oaks at saratoga the cotillion at parks and then of course the breeders cup distaff at churchill downs not her four races this year four different tracks uh she was dropping from a tough two-turn race in the kentucky oaks down to a fast one-turn race uh there was going to be a speed duel and she was yanked off of that speed duel and she sat as pretty as she could in third and then dominated the race from there in She's broken bad and won. She's been alone on the lead and won easy. She's fought her way to victory. She can go one turn. She can go two turns. She is no Rachel Alexander of nine years ago. But on the other hand, she is just everything you'd want to see in a racehorse. She sure is. She's, uh, uh, she's tactical. She uh, uh, is adaptable. And, and she is talented. And daughter of the uh, young sire Tapazar over at Gangsway Farm. So Monomoy Girl is already well on her way to being a three-year-old Philly champion. Not other big winners. I'm going to rattle off some winners. Baffert had a few big winners. Abel Tasman looked like her old self in the grade one. Ogden Phipps. Opportunity. The opportunity train. He's not the best horse in America. Never has been. But he just keeps on rolling. I believe he's over 4.5 million, Matt. He won the Brooklyn. How good is a raving beauty since arriving in America for Chad Brown? Her two races here, including the Just a Game on Belmont Day, was big. And then we had a really nice Met Mile with B Jersey and Mind Your Biscuit. Yeah, B Jersey uh, for Steve Asmussen. It's a Fip, uh, Charles Fipke horse. This one with Asmussen um, is on a roll, work, uh, working her way up the ladder this year with four races in a row. What a speedy, speedy son of uh, Jersey Town. Um, and, and the Met Mile turned out to be the most exciting uh, stretch run of the 
of the Belmont Stakes card as uh, Mind Your Biscuits was grinding it down, coming down the stretch, um, stretching out to a mile, and just missed at the wire one more step, and Mind Your Biscuits probably gets there. That was a great race. Uh, two very nice horses. Yeah, they left a good field uh, in their dust. Uh, Limousine Liberal was a kind of a distant third there. B Jersey is for real, serious speed horse. And mind your biscuits, ran a huge race, just like he did in his last race in Dubai on the Met Mile. And Matt Abel Tasman has me more excited again, looking down the road to a race like the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Abel Tasman doing her thing, unique Bella recently in California. A late is going to come back soon. And then you got the three year old Monomoy girl. So I'm already starting to get excited about the Breeders' Cup Distaff. Were there any other? Uh, performances that you want to mention from just a stacked few days at Belmont Park. Yeah, I think those were the those were the, the certainly the highlight races from the card that that had tremendous racing on the grass and on the dirt. Abel Tasman seems to love Belmont Park. Uh, she hadn't won in a while, but she she puts on a show when she races on Big Sandy. Big performance. I want to give you props, Matt. Uh, I didn't think Four Star Crook could get it done in a mile and a quarter. She beat Sister Charlie. Uh, Sister Charlie might have had a little bit of excuse there, but Four Star Crook, what a nice New York bred turf filly she is. Both trained by Todd Br- uh, Chad Brown, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and and Graham Motion came up with a big long shot winner in the uh, Manhattan at eighteen to one with Edgar Edgar Prado up. That was a that's a feel good victory anytime the. The veteran Edgar Prada wins a big grade one race on the on the big stage. And another one that you had a few dollars on as well. So well done there, sir. Matt, we could talk about everything that went down in New York, Belmont Stakes Day, Belmont Stakes cards uh, for hours. But uh, let's push forward. Let's go to the near future. The place to be Saturday will be at right here in Louisville, Kentucky, Churchill Downs, Saturday evening for a big card of graded stakes racing led by the Stephen Foster, the grade one Stephen Foster. Lots of good horses have won it in the past. Matt, we're looking at a division right now that's still a little bit ripe for the taking. Not a lot of great older mares, uh, males out there. West Coast hasn't won yet this year. Accelerate looks good, but we've seen him lose a lot of races in the past few years. Maybe backyard heaven. The uh, the Ramsey uh, Chad Brown horse can step up and and put his name in the ring as, as perhaps the best older dirt male in the country. Yeah, this certainly isn't the kind of Stephen Foster that we've seen in the past, where uh, uh, winners of that race have gone on to uh, take the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, there's no Gun Runner in here. There's no Blame in here. There's no Curlin. Or Fort Lorner. And as a matter of fact, in the in the likely field, the the none of the horses have even won a Grade One race yet. So this is this is uh, one of them is going to get their first big victory at that level. Um, Irish War Cry coming off his uh, win in the on the sloppy track on uh, Preakness weekend um, is looking to put uh, two big races together, which is something that he hasn't done in his career very often, going back to when he won the Wood Memorial and the Holy Bull on the Derby Trail as a three-year-old. Um, looking at Lee, who we all remember from the Derby Trail and finishing second in the Kentucky Derby, um, came back and won an allowance race uh Closer to the lead, running right with the leaders um, in a way that we had never been seen seen before. Is he going to run that kind of style again? And and could that be the key to uh, looking at Lee breaking out um, in the Stephen Foster? I don't know. Interesting um, in there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no as my prediction to that last uh, statement. Looking at Lee is a nice enough horse. Uh, but no, that was a extremely slow pace on Derby Day. And uh, frankly, Matt, uh, as I look at the Stephen Foster, uh, you know, I, I've come to a point here where I think if any other horse but uh, Backyard Heaven or Irish War Cry wins the race, this will be a race that really means little in the grand scheme of things. Be a nice win for whoever wins it. But looking at the division, looking at the year, looking at the Breeders' Cup Classic at the same track. Uh, several months later, this one won't mean a lot. However, Irish Warcry 
if he does put it all together, he's got that type of strong early uh, early speed, good looking talented horse for Grand Motion. He's just thrown in some real clunkers. Uh, I can think of three or four races where he just didn't show up. But his Pimlico special was big. If he is, in fact, putting things together, I think he's a very interesting horse moving forward. This will be a good test for him. And Backyard Heaven, we really don't know how good he looks because I'll tell you what, his Ali Sheba was among the most impressive races of the last month or two. Only four lifetime races. He came out last fall as a, as a real late debuter uh, uh, in the fall of his three-year-old season. Ran second that day at Belmont Park, but then uh, two uh, good-looking wins at Aqueduct and now the Ali Sheba. Backyard heaven, I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. A couple months from now, we're calling him the best older male in the country. Right, and of course, that Ali Sheba was right there on Churchill Downs, so we know that that horse likes uh, likes the track there. Yeah, son of Tiz, uh, Tiz Way, for, uh, again, for Chad Brown. Lots of great stakes, as we talked about uh, uh, I think the biggest news outside of the Foster on Saturday Mount will be the return of world plu- approval. Uh, we lost his uh, really, really, really good value sire, Northern of Fleet, uh, recently. Uh, but world approval, you know, other than his last race, has sure looked like a legitimate best turf force in America this year after a championship season last year. He won his first start at Turfway. But then the Francis Kilroy Mile, grade one out west, he really didn't. Uh, didn't fire so it'll be interesting to see world approval if he can bounce back and get back to his best racing the six-year-old gelding yeah and i assume you'll be there uh on saturday night brian absolutely i'll be there uh meeting friends meeting uh possible derby day racing partners so i'm looking forward to a great night at churchill towns on saturday led by the stephen foster hey matt i think we got to thank our sponsor the best contest site out there derby wars also, folks, we, Matt and I, appreciate you watching every week. We get so many nice comments out there at the track. It's, it's, uh, it's great for us. We enjoy doing this, obviously. But we do ask you, uh, if you haven't yet, to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here on Horse Racing Nation. We continue to talk a little bit about our new venture, Derby Wars. We've gotten a lot of interest and new partners coming in of late, Matt, so that's exciting. Yeah, and I want to thank, we we met a lot of Horse Center fans, a lot of new people that we'd never met before out uh, at Belmont Park, and we really appreciate that. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Brett Workman. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next week. Thank you to Brett Workman. As we leave you, let's, uh, let's watch that stretch run of the excellent, as Matt alluded to, the excellent Met Mile between B Jersey and Mind Your Biscuits. And we're ready to go. All in line. They're off in the run happy Met Mile and B Jersey showing that early speed of his out for the lead with one liner and there goes Bolt Doro into the mix too from the inside. He's going to go after B Jersey in the early stages. Then Warriors Club on the outside of Limousine Liberal and down toward the inside is Mind Your Biscuits who's in mid pack. And just ahead of Ransom the Moon up the backstretch. And then it's McCracken, followed by Discreet Lover. Awesome slew to the outside and late running Good Samaritan. The pace is not all that fast here. They went 23.08 for the first quarter mile. And B Jersey leads the way by three quarters of a length over one liner. Bolt Doro was third on the inside as they make their way for the far turn. And then comes Warriors Club. Limousine Liberal is right in that mix too, moving for the turn. And then Mind Your Biscuits, who's five lengths off the lead after a 45.71 half mile. Three lengths to Ransom the Moon. McCracken on the inside. Awesome Slew is next. Discreet Lover and Good Samaritan beginning to pick up his stride at the back of the pack. B Jersey on top. One liner attacks and Mind Your Biscuits has been swung to the outside for a clear run at the pace setters. Warriors Club is next. And then Limousine Liberal to the inside. And they're into the stretch. B Jersey holding on to the lead after three quarters and 109.28. He kicks clear length. Mind Your Biscuits is running after him. Limousine Liberal takes third on the inside. Final furlong. B Jersey and Mind Your Biscuits to fight it out in the run. Happy Met Mile. Mind Your Biscuits trying to get B Jersey late. They come to the line and B Jersey holds off Mind Your Biscuits to win it. Limousine Liberal was third and Discreet Lover fourth at 133.13.